Hi, a cry cut maker three. Now this is a, a kind of vinyl cutter plotter type uh, thing for doing arty stuff. Uh, my wife actually bought one of these off uh, Facebook a few months ago and when she got it home and whatever and uh, went to set it up which was a, a couple of months later she realised that she didn't actually get the power pack with it so I purchased this faulty one uh, mainly for the power pack uh, and I thought uh, we'd have a look at it and see if we could repair it now one of the things that I don't quite agree with what Crycut actually does is if one of these machines goes faulty for any reason you know so that could be a, a bit of plastic cracked or anything uh, they'll send a replacement out to the customer if it's covered, covered under warranty and they tell the customer just to bin this one and what they do is they then ban the serial number from uh, working with the software so in this class is like a deactivated uh, unit uh, I'll pull up a screenshot just to show you what I mean now Another thing that I'm not quite happy with as well is the uh, the software only works if you've got an internet connection. So if for some reason, uh, you know, you haven't got an internet connection, you know, if your internet goes down or whatever and you've got something to do with this, you can't do it. Because um, you've got to log into the software and pretty much all of the files and work that you do is actually saved online instead of on the computer. Now you can do a, what's called an offline mode uh, where well you can save stuff locally, but you need to log into the software first. Uh, so what I'm trying to get at is, if, even if we repair this machine and fix the problem with it, uh, it might still be just uh, a doorstop. But we'll have a go anyway. Uh, right, so this bit opens up and this uh, bit goes on here. And it works pretty much just like a printer. We've got a carriage that moves left and right. And what goes in here, there's like a, a cutting sort of wheel thing that, uh, like a cutting pen that goes into that point there, which is then used to cut patterns like uh, what the previous owner has done on the top here. And also, I think you can put a pen in this uh, in this one here, and it'll draw patterns out or or whatever. I mean, I'm I'm not a hundred percent with it because I've uh, I've not actually uh, used one before. But uh, we'll, we'll plug it in, we'll see what it does first, and then uh, we'll take it apart and see if we can repair it. So, let's put it uh, down here. Now, the user had described that it had no power. So, I'll just plug the power supply in. And we've got a, I don't know if you can see that there, we've got a little light on the power supply. So, I shall just go and grab my test meter. Right, so, I've got the test meter here on uh, volts DC. And we'll just check the output of this uh, power supply. And it should be 24 volts. And we've got 24.22 there. So, so the power supply is actually okay. I will uh, plug this in. It's got a power connector on the back here. It's a bit, uh, it's quite heavy and big to work on. Right, so power supply still lit up there. Now, what happens on a working one is this uh, power button lights up white, and it's obviously not doing that on this one. It just seems completely dead. Right, we'll uh, unplug the power supply. And we'll see how we get into it. I'll just uh, close these bits for now. Like I said, it's a little bit big to work on my bench here, but uh, we should manage. Right, I think I'll remove these screws on the bottom first. So I'll just get a Phillips screwdriver. And then I'm going to remove these uh, seven screws along the bottom here. So how does this come apart now then? Right. 
right, so we've got, uh, there's a metal bar under here. I'll just tip this up so you can actually, you might be to see just, I don't know. Yeah, you can just see there's a couple of screws. I just try and point the one there. Just here, there, and there's a couple more further along as well. And I think there's some uh, right under this lip as well. There's about eight of them. So I think we've got to remove those as well. So we'll try and uh, get in with those. I might have to use a... I don't know if I've got a stubby screwdriver. Uh, I'll just see what I can find. I'll be back in a moment. Right, so I'm back with uh, this. Because I didn't have a screwdriver short enough to fit in. So this should uh, fit into the screws like that. And I should be slacking them off. Like so. And then undo them with my fingers with the, by taking that bit off and just turning that. So that's the plan. Right, so there's a total of seven of those little silver screws that are in this uh, top piece here. Now, this part won't come off because this part's in the way. Well, there's no screws or anything on the top there. So I think this, uh, this piece here has to come off. So we'll uh, see if we can get that off somehow. Right, so I had a quick look online just to see uh, how this comes off. And it's, um, apparently this bit's actually glued in place. So there's no easy way of getting it off apart from brute force. So I'm going to try and get a screwdriver. Just under here. That came off not so bad. Right, yeah, you can see where the, uh, where the bits of glue hold it in place so it's not um, it's not very user serviceable let's say right it looks like we need a torx because there's four more screws just down here I'll try a T10 we'll see if that fits and it's slightly too big but I might get away with it it's probably a T8 or something Let's see if I've got a uh, smaller one slightly. There we go. Alright, so that's the four screws out. Now this part still doesn't want to come out for some reason. Alright, so that's the uh, top bit removed. Let's put this out of the way. see uh, a ribbon cable or something going to the front panel here. Just get the connector out of the way. Hmm. Now, I don't know if something's been spilt in this. I'm just looking at the, uh, let's see if you can, if I can move it along a bit. Like I say, it's quite heavy this. Uh, I've got a torch. Yeah, got the Milwaukee one here. Yeah, just looking down here. I don't know if you can see that very good. Um, it looks like there's a load of coffee or something. Possibly being spilled in this. And I can see, I think, some corrosion on the circuit board. Is this torch any better? No. Anyway, you can kind of see there, there's a... Uh, I wonder if I can zoom down a bit as well. Yeah, you can see uh, there's definitely been some kind of spillage around there. Right, I'm going to turn this around. So I can get a better view from the back here. I 
because it looks like the main circuit board is over here and again I can see bits of uh, what looks like coffee or something spilled around here so I think I'm going to have to get this carriage out to try and get to the circuit board underneath See, it's quite a big unit this to work on so right, it looks like we might have to remove there's a couple of screws on the front here just a little washer there yeah screw there screw there I'm right, just going to start removing those so that's the uh, two screws from that side and that's the two screws from that side and I also see there's a screw there and a screw there that's the one on this side out right we've got a lot of uh, I don't know what it is, but it's like very sticky grease stuff around this cog here. Alright, now I might have to do some more disconnection of wires and that here as I try and lift this carriage up. So let's have a look. Where I can even grab this from? Alright, well, I can see it print head or cutting head connector here I don't know if you can quite see that just under there there's like a ribbon cable this one here so I'm going to have to disconnect that and it's just like a, a little brown connector thing that you just push back either side of it and then that just unplugs so that's out of the way now. Alright, so what else have we got in here? A lot of these wires are taped down. Alright, I wonder if I can just get this board slid over a bit now. and do some of these connectors right I can get a glimpse of the board now right I just need to clean my hands a sec I'm all gunged up with this uh, sticky stuff I think what I'm going to do is because uh, there's only one other connector on this board is uh, unplug this connector I'm going to unscrew the circuit board and then we'll have a look at it under the microscope to see what's going on. Another screw there. Oh, right. Well, that doesn't look too uh, good, does it? Right, I'm going to get this carriage out of the way and then uh, we'll clean this up under the microscope and see what's going on. So it looks like we've got uh, coffee or something. Uh, around this area. And it looks like it goes all the way up. There's a bit of corrosion on the pad there. And on these test pads. There's a fair bit of corrosion around about here as well. That's the uh, USB connector there. Right, we'll just, uh, that looks about it on this side of the board. We'll slip the board over and we'll have a look. Looks like there's a bit of corrosion 
just here in the uh, centre of the screen there. Uh, where's that USB? There's a bit. Uh, that's where the USB connector is. And this is the connector that goes to the front panel here. And there's a bit of corrosion around about here. Now, is that a component missing there? I think one of the pads has just came off as well, possibly. I think, uh, I'm just looking at the uh, connector here. And these pins, because they go through resistors, they look like inputs. And this one here, it looks like it could be a power. Because it comes, it's grounded on one side, goes to a, a um, ferrite bead. And it looks like there's a Zena diode or something here. And then it goes through another ferrite bead that's missing. And then goes onto the first pin of this uh, power connector here. So I wonder if that component's rotted off and that's why the uh, the unit's not responding to the key presses when you try and turn it on. So you can see bits of uh, coffee and whatever. It's actually still wet. This looks like a Bluetooth uh, device here yeah, made by Microchip Technologies. Bluetooth uh, transmitter receiver module because you can either use this via USB or Bluetooth. So I wonder if this just needs uh, cleaned up and then a new ferrite bead. I mean, we could probably just get away with putting a jumper wire across it, to be quite honest with you. The ferrite beads just to stop uh, interference pretty much. Uh, I mean, I'll have a look. I'll probably have one on an old circuit board that we're going to use, but failing that, I'll just, uh, I might just put a jumper wire across there. Right, I'm going to use some IP and a toothbrush, and we'll just clean up this area first, I think. I'll get some cotton buds on it. So, back to where, what I was saying about if these are warranty replacements. Uh, if this is liquid damage by the user, should this have even been replaced on the warranty? Well, yeah, it definitely looks like there's a component missing there. I might have to try and clean those pads up a little bit with the little grind and pen, possibly. I don't know if they're going to clean up. Um, let's try doing a scrape. I don't think, I'm not even sure if there's any pad left. I think it's just rotted away. Yeah, because there's copper on that one, I'm just nearly back to the copper there. Yeah, I think that whole vial has just rotted away there. It must be good stuff, this coffee. Quite uh, corrosive. Right, I think we'll have a look at the uh, other parts. Let's see where that coffee was round about here. I'll try and clean some of that up. Yeah, there's another bit of corrosion just here. Uh, what else have we got on this board here? Uh, looks like there's uh, three motor driver ICs there. That's what I guess those will be. Uh, that's the main microcontroller there. I'll just try and get that in a bit more focus there. Which is a PIC32 MK1024MCF. Let's see if I can pull up the specs on that. 
Uh, what else have we got? It looks like there's another couple of uh, motor driver chips just here and here. So the rest of the board actually looks okay. It looks like the main problem is, um, like I said, where the uh, this bit of damage here, which hopefully will should be the repair. And we'll have a look on the other side. Yeah, it's literally just eaten away the copper. There's just there's a little bit of copper left on this one, but that one is just totally gone. There's just no pad left at all. The same with this one. It's just totally dissolved it. Yeah, you can see where the pads uh, were supposed to be, but they're just totally gone. I mean, like I said, those ones shouldn't actually make a lot of difference with them just being uh, test pads or test points. So, it's ones like these that may cause a problem if they go through uh, the buyers first or whatever. The buyer there looks okay. Yeah, see so things like this one would make a difference because the track goes into the pad and then comes out the pad and goes through a via. But these ones shouldn't uh, affect it if, uh, if they are corroded. I'm going to give this a clean up again. So at this point I've pretty much uh, resigned to uh, think that it's not going to work and that we're not going to be able to save this one. Uh, I mean besides the fact that it's probably been deactivated by Crycut, I think a lot of the uh, tracks here on the back, let me just get this in shot there, they've just corroded all the way through um it's like this one here for instance uh, i'll try and get a bit more better in focus the track just goes there and then it just disintegrates and it's pretty much the same with that one with that one with this one um, there's a few with us as well it's i mean like this one here just goes to there and then just it just disintegrates even some of the bigger power rails, um, let's see if I can find it, I think it's here, yeah, they just stop, the copper just, it's just non-existent, it just goes from there and then nothing, I mean I could possibly patch a wire from there to there, but there's a few other ones as well that I've noticed, so I think, you know, it's just going to be, I mean it's like that via there, I don't know what that's for, but that looks all corroded, same with this one here, you get the idea. I mean, I think I'll. I'm just going to try just soldering a wire, just across from uh, there to there, just to see what happens, just to see if we can, just to see if the power light comes on. Uh, you know, just well, we'll see what it does. But I'm not holding my breath with this one now. I think it's uh, beyond repair. So that should. Uh, should sort that out. Right, I'm just going to get the microscope out of the way a sec. Plug the uh, power in. A lot of the uh, corrosion is around about where the front panel input goes in. I'm just going to check uh, we've got voltage. So if I just go on, the USB is a ground here. 
And I'll just check this end pin now. Yeah, we've got five volts there. I've got three point two there. One point five. So like I said, I think the power supplies and everything's working. The CPU's probably working. It's just um, it's just all the corrosion around here that's basically destroyed all of the uh, vias and tracks. So it's probably not even getting the signal to switch on. So I thought I'd bring the board up close to the camera just so you can see what I'm dealing with here. Um, just loads of these vias are just rotted through on the board I mean you can see there where there's actually no material on the copper there's well no copper left I mean uh, there's just like a via there like just all all of the ones that are pretty much black they've just rotted through I did try and having a go at repairing some of the uh, tracks that were gone with bits of wire there but I mean you can see the copper's just it's just destroyed and you can see some more black vias there where it's just rotted through they're just everywhere I think that uh, I thought it was coffee at first but I'm I'm thinking this was coke because I don't think coffee would cause corrosion like this but I think coke would so I think they've been drinking a glass of coke or whatever. Or there's been a glass of coke in the other machine. And it's been knocked over. And getting onto the circuit board. And it's just dissolved all of the copper. So unfortunately uh, I think we've got a, a no fix on this one. I think the damage is just uh, too severe. And that's not to mention the... Um, the thing with it possibly being deactivated, which I don't quite agree with. Uh, and the uh, machine having to be online to even be used. So, uh, I might come across a circuit board for one of these at some point, or another broken one, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with it at the moment, but uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Right then. Uh, like I said, unfortunately no fix on this one, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.